Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. I hope you guys had a happy new year, happy 2024 to everybody. Um, I wanted to start the new year off right, or at least hopefully right. I always get requests from you, um, you know, what food is the best? Can't you just tell me what's the best? I've been searching forever and I just want to know what's the best, just cut to the chase. And that's a very hard question um, to answer and usually I tell you that. I can't tell you what's the best for you because I don't know you personally. But what I can do is go through some of the 2024 best picks as decided by various agencies. So every year they come out with, you know, NBC comes out. Last year I did insider's pick for the best uh, pet food in 2023. And so, you know, all these companies come out and they post what they think is going to be the best. And so I want to start with um, NBC's best picks for pet food in the year 2024. So we're gonna start a little series on that. Hopefully it'll be fun. Hopefully they will be good picks because I was a little disappointed with the picks by Insider last year. It seemed like um, they were picked more about um, you know, maybe what food sold the best in 2023 or what was the most popular food, but not necessarily what was the best food or the healthiest food. And so hopefully NBC will focus on that. I did um, browse through this article. Uh, if you want to check it out, it's NBCnews.com. Um, and the article is the best dry dog food for every life stage according to veterinarians. So right there I was like, okay, now there's going to be some basis. It's not just some random pick. Um, you know, somebody just, you know, was looking at packages or something like that. This was actually, uh, you know, maybe a thoughtful process. And so this article is by Miss Janelle Leeson and she did consult two veterinarians. She consulted a Dr. Dottie Laflamme, who is an independent consultant of animal nutrition. And then, um, she also consulted down here on the bottom. Uh, Dr. Jonathan Stockman, who is a veterinarian and an assistant professor of clinical sciences at Long Island University of College of Veterinary Medicine. And so he's an acting professor. So neither vet is a board certified nutritionist, but that's fine because neither am I. I think any veterinarian is capable of doing this baseline approach. And so just the tip of the iceberg approach. Certainly if you have more detailed questions, that should be addressed to a board certified veterinary nutritionist. And I'd like to point out um, because there has been, you know, talk around and I've seen in other videos and there is a distinct difference between a certified, I think it's called a certified dog nutritionist or something like that and a board certified veterinary nutritionist. And so a board certified veterinary nutritionist is a veterinarian. They completed all their undergrad. They completed a doctoral degree in veterinary medicine. That's usually going to take about eight years. And then they've continued their education on top of that to specialize in nutrition. Um, and that's usually several years. Um, a lot of nutritionists are also double board certified in like internal medicine and nutrition. And so we're talking about eight years plus additional two for maybe longer years versus um, a dog certified dog nutritional specialist or something like that that's not a veterinarian probably just took some sort of a course and that course isn't necessarily validated or certified or anything like that they're not qualified to give uh, medical advice where a board certified um, veterinary nutritionist would be and so um, kind of a long way of saying it's fine that the veterinarians that they use were not board certified nutritionists um, they're like me they're just a veterinarian that takes a special maybe interest in nutrition and they also have some other qualifications and other work and study that they have done and that's perfectly fine but I just wanted to make sure that there was a clear as we're going into 2024 a clear distinction in that nomenclature because I think a lot of people get confused with that as well and that can add to some of the confusion um, it does say that uh, there was a disclosure um, Dr. Laflamme worked for Purina's research and development team until she retired in 2015 and Dr. Stockman um, is a veterinary consultant for Petco, but he does not receive any financial compensations or recommendation, you know, perks for any of the brands. And so we're going to go through, I'm not sure if there are any Petco brands on here, but we'll find out and we'll see how they stack up. Um, because yeah, we want to, we want to know what's the best. Um, Janelle Leeson is a Portland freelance, a uh, freelance writer and she holds a bachelor's degree in biology and her approach to pet care writing and reporting is rooted in scientific principles. And so hopefully she has, you know, some coming to the table with some knowledge that's going to help us out. And, you know, we're not going to get stuck with all the marketing, um, traps that we see because we're going to focus hopefully on the science and, um, you know, that's, that's what I'm into. And so I'm kind of happy that that's what we're going to do this year.
Um, it was actually published uh, March 27th of 2023. Uh, but it says it was updated October 19th. And so um, I'm not 100% sure how they could have known what was going to be the best in 2024 and 2023. But um, when I was searching, this was one of the first uh, articles that came up. And so we are going to dive into that. Um, and so how did they pick them? Um, they, they, they looked at a couple of uh, factors. And so while they were comparing the dry foods for dogs, they um, kept the following in mind. The breed size, and so you'll see that they did make some breed specific size recommendations like large breed puppy, et cetera. Um, they did take a look at the AFCO statement, so you know that that is very important to me. They say that uh, they wanna focus on all the ne necessary nutrients for a dog's lifestyle, and they wanna make sure it's complete and balanced. Uh, the nutritional guidance, so they want a recipe, um, or they're gonna hold recipes that were developed by board certified nutrition um, you know, in higher regards than those that aren't, and I totally agree with that. And then um, price, they did offer some budget-friendly options at the end. Now, I'm only gonna go through one today. If you guys like this, you can leave me comments down below. I'll start to go through all of them. I think that that would be a fun thing to do. I know I get a lot of requests and there's a lot of pending requests, but I think this might answer some of the questions in kind of a, round, a roundabout way. And so, and, and I think there's actually some foods um, that were selected that you guys had questions about. So I think that, I think this will be a fun thing. We're gonna start off with the very first one. The following were highly rated. Um, they share two important considerations. They meet or exceed the nutritional levels by AFCO. You know that I'm a big fan of meeting the nutritional levels. You know I'm a little bit, a little bit have a pet peep with the verbiage exceeding because when you exceed levels, especially when you exceed levels um, excessively, that is overdosing, you know, essentially. Um, you know, there are things that it's okay to be excess in. Um, you know, for instance, B vitamins, they're water, water soluble. And so if you're excessive on those, it's no big deal. The body's gonna process them and they're just gonna basically flow out. Um, but things like fat soluble vitamins, minerals, excess proteins, these aren't necessarily something that you wanna exceed the recommended levels for and so um, I see what they're saying but do um, take a little bit of caution when companies are touting exceeding levels because that's not always a good thing so just keep that in mind um, and so they want to keep it in mind the factors and ensure the dog is getting the right nutrients for their age and their breed but of course always check with your veterinarian and I totally agree with that and I tell that to a lot of you guys in the comments that um, you shouldn't be taking really advice from me or anyone on the internet, you should be using the information that we give you to form your own conclusions. Um, and that's why a lot of times I don't give you guys recommendations. I give you kind of a, a direction to follow. And then I always recommend that you follow up with your regular veterinarian because I don't know your pet and nobody on the internet should be giving you advice on your pet that doesn't know you or your pet personally. Um, and that's my firm belief and that's why I don't do that. But I do like to give you options to consider and have, you know, out there for discussion with your vet. We're gonna start with the best dry dog food for small breed puppies. Um, so there isn't a specific outlined life stage and you can check my shorts for some of the nutrient um, charts. There is not a specific one for small breed puppies. So large breed puppy is its own thing and there are some reviews or some recommendations here for large breed puppy, but regular size puppy um, and small breed puppy, there's not, you know, there's not really a specific um, life stage outline specific parameters, they're gonna be the same. And so what they're recommending is the Hill Science Diet Puppy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it to the test. Um, we are gonna go ahead and select the Science Diet and we're gonna go and see how it stacks up to the Dr. Ace Pet Food Scoring System. We're gonna do them all with the, the scoring system. Um, and the reason why is it's gonna keep everybody on an even uh, keel. It's gonna keep everybody on a base playing field. No one's gonna get extra points for things that um, you know, our marketing and don't really make a difference. And so we're gonna use that to evaluate all the foods. If we wanna look up this food, um, I suggest we go to hillspet.com. They're recommending this one right here with the little beagle, puppy chicken and brown rice recipe. Okay, so it comes in a four and a half pound bag, a 15 and a 27.5. Let's get started with going through the Dr. Ace Pet Foods going system and see how many points I'm gonna get my little notebook here. Okay, so let's go to the Science Diet website. We've got the puppy formula here. We're gonna start, um, we're gonna jump in, let's see. 
It's recommended for puppies up to one year old. It is not recommended for adult dogs. Adult dogs seven plus, that's gonna be a senior. And it's not recommended for obese or, or beast prone dogs. Okay, let's go to the ingredients. There are two points to have here. If it is not grain free and it is not raw, they are going to get the two points in this in this category. Um, and as you can read here, it's you know first ingredients chicken. Then we got brown rice, whole grain wheat, chicken meal, chicken fat, and then we've got corn, oats, pea protein, and some of the other ingredients following along. And so it is not grain free and it is not raw. That is my main concern on this base light approach. They are going to get two points for that. So starting off, you know, pretty strong here. I think that's an easy one to get the points on. Um, let's go to the nutrients. Let's, let's go there because that's usually what I'm most concerned about. Um, this food is 393 kcals per cup. We're gonna need that later for the feeding guide. And as you can see, how they've laid this out for us is they've got the nutrient here on the left-hand side and then they've got the nutrient percentage on the right side in a dry matter basis. And that's very important because the standards that we use that come from small animal clinical nutrition text are on a dry matter basis. And so you must compare dry matter to dry matter or as-fed to as-fed. You cannot interchange the two. And what you will find on the package, and I get a lot of questions about this, is why does the package not matter Match, you know what I'm seeing online and this would be an example why because the package is usually as fed um, and so that has the moisture content in there when we evaluate foods because we want them to be all on an even scale um, we remove that moisture because different foods have different moisture content this one may have 10 percent 20 percent can is 80 percent and so in order to use the standards um, those have been published on a dry matter basis and it's very nice that science diet has provided this on a dry matter basis because then we don't have to do conversions and so let's start going through this. I need to pull up. We're gonna make this a little smaller. We're gonna pull up over here, a regular puppy, not large breed. We're gonna pick up regular puppy. Okay. So starting at the top with the protein, um, ideally we want between 22 and 35 and they're at 27.8, so that's excellent. Fat, we want between 10 and 25. They're bringing it in at 19, so that's great. Fiber in puppies um, is not super important. There's not, there was not a listed um, statistic there in small animal clinical nutrition. There is for adult. Um, so I just put an X there. So basically any amount of fiber is fine. So they're gonna automatically get a point for that. Um, but just for reference, it's 2.5%. So that brings us up to three points. And now we get in to the part where a lot of diets seem to fall short and that's their ability to control the minerals. And so minerals are one of those things that um, pet food companies, you know, they want to give people what they want. People want high protein, they want high fat, and they don't really think a lot about minerals. So a lot of companies don't pay attention to that because they're more interested in giving people what they want than necessarily giving people what they need or giving them what they want and what they need. And so, um, you know, the minerals is where we usually see that happen. Um, the minerals are usually swept under the table. They usually are in excess because the time has not been taken to properly process the protein sources to keep that mineral value down. And so this is gonna be, you know, this is gonna be big here. If the minerals are on point, um, you know, this is gonna be, this is gonna be, this is, this is, this is the turning point here usually. So calcium's coming in at 1.54 which is gonna be great because we need it between 0 0.7 and 1.7, so it's a little bit on the higher end, but it is on a dry matter basis, and this is an actual number, not a minimum or maximum. So we're kind of golden there. And then usually if the calcium is good, the phosphorus is as well. Um, and the phosphorus is coming in at 1.26, again, kind of at the higher end, but still in the reference range. And so this is actually getting a five on the nutrient panel, and that does not happen often. And so whoever you know made this decision must be somewhat similar to me and thought that the nutrients were kind of key because this is right, this is spot on exactly what I would wanna see. And so we are up now to five, six, seven. And so to me, that's already amazing. Like seven, I'm already happy, but let's just keep going because I wanna see where this, you know, this ends up. The next thing, let's see, the next thing we need to find is we need to find the AFCO statement because that's another that's another parameter um, that a lot of times falls falls short because um, it's not either not feeding you know not feeding child um, or it's an all life stage food so we don't want either of those things we want a food that has been feeding child ideally and we want a food that is for the appropriate life stage so let's see yes it is here it is so it says animal feeding tests so they just like are highlighting that right off the bat we feeding trial our foods 
animal feeding tests using AFCO procedures, um, and that's a standard procedure in order to be able to put that on there. They've got to follow what the feed officials, you know, wanted them to follow. Substantiate that Hillsign Diet Puppy Chicken and Brown Rice recipe provides complete and balanced nutrition for growing puppies and gestating or lactating adult female dogs. And so that is the correct life stage. They have tested this on growing puppies, which is what this food was marketed for. And they're also saying that it can be fed to a pregnant mom that is currently growing puppies um, or um, lactating and feeding puppies. So that's that's perfect. So they're getting another two points there. So that brings us up to five, six, seven, eight, nine. And so if the feeding guide is correct, this is actually going to get a perfect score on the Dr. A's pet food scoring system and it will go into the playlist of the seven, eight, nine, ten 10 um, for puppies. So let's, let's see what we got here. Let's, we're gonna hold no expectations. So over here we've got the weight of the dog in pounds and in the parentheses we have kilograms. With puppies you will notice that there are gonna be several different um, columns and that's because they're different multipliers for how much a puppy should get at which stage it is in its growth. And so if it's less than four months of age, it's gonna be this column. If it's between four to nine months or pregnancy between five and six weeks, it's gonna be the middle column. And then when you're getting to 10 to 12 and you're starting to kind of pull back and it's beginning that transition to adult, you're gonna be this right size column. So let's do, um, Let's do, let's just do 20 pounds, this first column here, which is less than four months. That means we're gonna take the resting energy requirement, which is 363, and we're gonna multiply that um, by three. So 363 times three is 1089 is what it needs to be, needs to be close to. We said it was 393 kcals per cup, and they're saying a feed 2.75 cups which brings it in at 1080.75. So you do not get very much closer to 1089 than 1087.5. That is pretty amazing. And this, my friends, means that this food is a 10. I would consider it an awesome option. Um, at this point, if you wanted to dive in deeper to something, so okay, this is a 10, seems like a pretty good food. I wanna look into price. I wanna look into availability. I wanna look closer into ingredients. I wanna look into closer to processing. Um, this would be the time to do that. But if you are not wanting to do that and you are just saying, look, I'm happy, um, you know, I'm not into all that other stuff. I just want you to tell me, you know, a food that you think would be a good choice. I think this would be a good option to try out. Um, I don't think you get much, well, I guess you could get much better than a 10. I guess we could start adding bonus points, but we're not gonna do that today. We are gonna call that a day. We are gonna end on a happy note with our first, our first pick um, by NBCnews.com um, and Miss uh, Leeson. Yep, Miss Leeson, we're gonna end there with their first pick. I think that's a pretty awesome choice. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the playlist so that you guys can look at it further. Let me know what you think. And we will move on um, next time to the best dry food for adults. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed. I'll catch you later and have a happy 2024. Bye.